artists and welcome to day 53. Now day 53 is going to be all about green. Now I'm going to show you the various different ways that we can mix green without using specifically green. Now you've heard me say it before in videos that there actually should be no reason for you to actually ever buy green paint. You can make all the greens that you want with various different mixes and that's what we're going to go through today. Now we're going to use chrome yellow. You can of course use uh, cad yellow light. Uh, cad yellow on its own is a little bit too warm so this is probably the best green uh, the best uh, yellow to start off with all your greens. Now what I've got here is burnt umber. As far as I'm concerned burnt umber is probably the most underrated color in your paint box but you can do so much with burnt umber. Now we're just going to do a little bit to start off with. We can always add more. Now as you can see it takes a small amount of burnt umber to make a large difference. So we're going to, I'm just working on a piece of paper here folks, so it's not going to clean up really well as if I was working on a palette. I'm trying to uh, mix enough blobs so that I can take it across to each one. We're just going to do a little value scale here. Now it is true when you look at this that your mind probably goes to, towards brown. You start thinking about this in terms of brown and that is probably technically quite true but when you start painting landscapes this greeny color that you're creating here is probably going to be closer to some of the greens that you find in nature than a green that would come out of a green tube. If you can imagine doing a landscape painting and these are some of the greens and the shadowed areas of your trees or something to that effect. Okay so the next color that I'm going to use here is lamp black. Lamp black is a particularly nice one to use when you're making green out of black because lamp black is a quite a cool black so it's got quite a lot of blue in it and as you know the color wheel uh, blue and yellow will make green, but in this case we're going to be using a lamp black. You know, in the old master's time, back in the annals of history, yellow and black was the most common green. Now we can start to see this is looking a lot more green than the burnt umber version above it. I mean, that is decidedly green. Now the nice thing about oils, of course, is that I can simply take all of these colors put them into the fridge and they can keep for a very long time. And look at that lovely deep green that we've got going there. So the next color I've got here is the color that we will probably most commonly use to mix our greens and that is our French ultramarine. Now this is the kind of green that you would mix using your color wheel of course. don't need a lot of it to make a large difference. A small amount of French ultramarine will do. Okay, so the next color I'm going to be using here is Thalo Blue. Now, Thalo gives us a slightly different range of blues than what the French ultramarine gave us. You will see that it turns out to be a lot more acidic. Thalo Blue is an incredibly strong pigment, so really, even more so than the French Ultramarine, you really don't need very much of it. A little goes a very long way. But look how very acidic that green is. Now the last color I'm going to be using is Cerulean Blue. Now Cerulean is a much more cyan version of blue, and it's going to give us a completely different range of greens. Let's see what Cerulean does. And there we have it, artists. This is an enormous range of greens created from all sorts of colors here, three different blues, but I want you to take special notice of up here, the burnt umber and the black are probably going to give us 
the greens that are, are most commonly found in nature. So if you're a, a very prolific um, plain air painter, these are going to be the greens that you're probably mixing more than anything else. Now, yes, you're going to look at those and say, compared to this lot, they look quite brown. But if you compared that to actual browns, you would notice how much more greens there is in there than brown. Now the point that I'm trying to make when I do this exercise with my students is to show them that there is very seldom a green in a tube that you need to buy. You can produce pretty much any green that you want to. The greens down this end of the scale are starting to go towards the viridian greens and these are the much more acid uh, sort of permanent greens. You can start getting moss greens in this area here. So there's very little need to buy paint in a, a green paint in a tube. The only time that green paint becomes a necessity in a tube is of course when you're wanting a transparent color because your chrome yellow and your cad yellow are both opaque colors so whatever your resulting color is is going to be an opaque color. The uh, blues that you've got here, the thalo and the ultramarine are both transparent colors but because they've been mixed with an opaque yellow they become an opaque color. So these are all going to be op opaque colors and there's very few greens that you can buy in a tube that is not opaque colors. Viridian is the only one that I can think of off the top of my head that is that I know for a fact is a transparent color. You know at the end of the day painting supplies are so expensive that we need to save where we can so doing something like this to produce your greens rather than actually buying them in a tube is an enormous saving as an artist. Artists, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope this little tutorial on greens helped you to understand a little bit more about how to mix greens, particularly out in the field when you're doing plein air painting, and how to accurately get greens that are closer to nature rather than acidic greens here that you might need for a more man-made things like possibly fabric. But with these small little range of colors, you can produce pretty much every green that you need. So artists, I hope you have a really, really great Friday and I will see you tomorrow in day 54. Thank you so much for joining me. See you tomorrow. Bye. That's what you want to do.